So um, Todd Stiefel is, in addition to being a philanthropist and an activist and someone who is doing his part to make this a better country for those of us who are without belief in supernatural higher powers, um, he's also someone who has a vision of how to help make those like us more normal, more visible, and more open in the American society. Openly Secular is a campaign that he came up with and started, and um, they've gotten quite a bit of play. New York Times much, Todd, very nicely done. Uh, and if he would make his way up to the stage, I would be delighted to do that. Um, Todd is going to talk a bit more about this Openly Secular campaign, and will we learn how we can get involved, Todd? I'll tell you a few of those things, yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Well, I can't wait to hear this presentation. Everyone, Todd Stiefel, thank you so much. Thank you. Careful, careful. So, I'm here to talk to you today about Openly Secular, with a lot of reverb. <laughs> and Openly Secular is a campaign and coalition which I actually cannot take the credit, although I appreciate that from Jamila. I didn't have the idea to create it in the first place. That goes to Robin Cornwell, who many of you may know, who was with the Richard Dawkins Foundation for a long time. It was just my idea to amplify it and reinvent it. So this is the kind of successor campaign to the original out campaign of the Richard Dawkins Foundation. And this is based on a lot of market research, we actually had focus groups and surveys and hired a real PR company to go through and brand it and make sure our messages were targeted and to the right place. So, this is what we're gonna talk about today. First, what the campaign is supposed to be addressing, which is the pattern of prejudice. And I'm gonna get rid of this chair. All right, the pattern of prejudice, then what the coalition actually is and what the campaign concept is, the resources we've created, which to my knowledge never existed before in the atheist secular movement. I'm gonna talk about our video campaign and also about Openly Secular Day, which is coming up on April 23rd, the first one. All right, so let's talk about prejudice. You may be familiar with some of this data. It is not pretty for us, unfortunately. So, except for this first slide. The first slide is who we are, the nuns. The nuns are 22% of the population based on the new American values survey that came out just two weeks ago. So 22% and even larger in that 18 to 20, or 18 to 30 category. Uh, what's interesting is, if you, and hard to do, is to figure out who of these nuns are actually atheists, agnostics. It's not the whole thing. There's a whole bunch of those nuns that are big time theists and gung ho about it. They just don't go to church and I just hit a horrible button. Uh, so of that, and it's in small print at the bottom, but roughly half of the nuns are atheists and agnostics. Another quarter are deists and the last quarter, straight up God fearing theists. But 22%, half that's 11% of the population. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's quite a few Americans right there. And of course in that under 30 category, 34% is huge. That is gonna be a massive demographic shift in this country and a study that actually just came out this week was showing that we're gonna be roughly 100 million of us by 2050 of the nuns category. This, this is going to change the political landscape as we know it for the better. Unfortunately, if we're going to have any influence at all in this country or frankly really even any respect at all, we're gonna to have to fix these pieces of information here, 45% of Americans believe you cannot be a moral person without a belief in God. That is literally half of the American population, basically, feels everyone who doesn't believe in God, which would be atheists and agnostics who don't know, are simply evil, lacking in all morality. That's why they rent out a stadium across the street to protest us, because they think we're immoral. That is the root cause of the discrimination. That is what we have to fix. So how does this result in day-to-day -day discrimination? One of the surveys here is marrying into a family. Worst trade on there, gun owner. People do not want gun owners to marry into their family, 19%. They don't like Democrats or Republicans either, I guess that's the divide, probably not the same people. Maybe the Green Party gets really pissed and doesn't like either one. But what's the top of that? Blowing it all away, half of Americans don't want atheists marrying into their family problem. 
How about being elected? They did a study of whether or not you'd be more likely to vote for a candidate based on different characteristics. Dead last at the bottom, 53% of Americans are less likely to vote for a candidate just for being an atheist. That's worse than drug users, that's worse than adulterers, that's worse than people with no experience at all. <laughs> so we don't poll well at all. This is the challenge we face. Here's another one, this is a Gallup survey also gauging. This is a one where they specifically said, we have a well-qualified candidate from your own political party. Can you imagine actually getting a well-qualified candidate in your party alone? Like, oh my gosh, how about that? But they're Catholic. 99, 95% of people are okay voting for a Catholic, a woman, an African-American, a Jew. Dead last, even below Muslims, atheists. Only 54% would vote for an atheist, even if they're well-qualified and in their own party. 45% would vote against us just based on our atheism. That sole criteria. We've got a long way to go. Now, we've made some progress. If you look back in time here, we have come up quite a bit from back in the 50s, but we've got a long way to go. But there, there's hope. The gay rights movement has certainly, you can see the green line there. They've got a long way to go too, but they have made huge progress just in the last two decades. So what is this campaign? This campaign is really about helping us no longer be this third rail in America, and we are the third rail of politics. Actually, there's a quick story there. I went to the Religion Newswriters Association conference a few years ago, and they asked, this is for Obama's re-election campaign, they said to the expert panel of, of political religion analysts and professors, what demographic does Obama have to win to, to win this election? And without missing a beat, they're like, he has to win the nuns, but he cannot let anybody realize he's trying to get the nuns to vote for him, or he will lose the election, because they are the third rail of politics. So that is that professor's quote right there. We don't get elected to office. Nuns are 22% of the population. Think about that. Our US Congress, 535 people. We should have over 100 representatives in the Senate and House, and we have one, Kirsten Sinema of Arizona. One. If we were properly represented, we'd have over 100 times what we have now. And of course, they're certainly not catering to us. When was the last time they like, wanted to come to an event like this to try to get elected? Only if we beg them to show up. So we've won our rights, but we really don't have equality at this point. The, the military will not allow in our chaplains, even when they're just as qualified. In the Greece case up in New York, they, have, they now allow invocations, and the Supreme Court specifically said the reason they allow invocations before the meetings is because Greece would allow atheists to do it. Aha, that was when they won the case. Since then, they've passed a, a rule there blocking that, and they've done that as well in a bunch of other counties as well. So you can say only religious invocations in these areas. It's real bias against real people. Joni Mars had a six-year-old daughter in Oklahoma beaten on the school bus when her peers found out she was an atheist. Literally beaten. This happened multiple times to her. They eventually had to leave, run out of Oklahoma and move to New York to escape the physical and verbal abuse they were facing. There's people who are shunned. We probably all know people, many of us in this room probably have been shunned by friends or family. This is real stuff really harming people. And of course the death threats. I mean, <laughs> Amanda Scott, Jessica Alquist, the list goes on and on and on. So many people have received death threats. This, it's organized terror trying to silence us, frankly. So how about this campaign? This campaign, it's not all that original, to be honest. It's modeled off, out of success story. Gay rights campaign, enormously successful. Look at this graph here and this one. Support of gay marriage is vastly higher if you know somebody who's gay. It is that simple you're almost twice as likely to support marriage equality if you know someone who's gay. And these numbers are from 2002. That went from 48% to 68% just in four years. And I'm sure the number is even higher than that if we could get 2015 data. It's about knowing people. It's about putting that human face on. It's humanizing us. That's what this concept is about. And a lot of us are doing it. We're trying to essentially do what this movement's been doing for a long time, but start adding in a lot of the features we haven't had. We've got to humanize us. We have to have people understand us. And frankly, and this is an interesting point, Will Gervais has a study where just the perception 
of there being more atheists actually reduces discrimination against atheists. The more they think we are rare, the more discrimination we face. Interesting little fact. Now, one thing we're not doing in this campaign, and it's totally okay for you folks to do it, but in this specific campaign, we are not attacking religion at all. This is just a straight up, warm and fuzzy, even trying to partner with religious groups who can back us in the concept that we should all not have to suffer discrimination. So far, we haven't had any religious groups agree to partner with us, but we're trying. <laughs> even warm and fuzzy, it's hard to get that. So our mission is simple. It's to eliminate discrimination and increase acceptance by getting secular people to be open about their beliefs. We have a huge coalition. The acceleration partners, we call them, are from a variety of different groups. We're targeting, as I said, the whole nuns, atheists, agnostics, humanists, seculars, whatever label you want to do. We even have non-theistic religious groups, such as ethical culture and secular Jews in our coalition. And we are not fighting over label choice for this campaign. We actually specifically chose the word secular so people could say, or in my case, I'm an atheist and I'm openly secular. Choose whatever word you want, we don't care. You could be, we don't want to get into that debate. We use picked secular as an overarching term, much like Secular Coalition for America, Secular Student Alliance, etc. So this is a partnership of the people doing the day-to-day -day work. It's Richard Dawkins Foundation, Secular Student Alliance, Secular Coalition for America, and my foundation, as well as support from more logos than I could fit on a slide <laughs> without it looking sloppy. You can see up on the top, American Atheist is one of our coalition partners in this effort. We also have received allies on this, which is kind of cool. The ACLU has formally endorsed our mission, as is people from the American Way, Military Religious Freedom Foundation, and Americans United all support us in this concept of simply eliminating discrimination. This shouldn't be a controversial topic, unfortunately it can be. So, again, back to the gay rights movement. Something that struck me several years ago is I went to the HRC, Human Rights Campaign website, for their out day. And on there they have all these cool resources. And I was like, we don't have these. Our movement simply didn't have this kind of resource available in short form. We have some awesome books on the topics. Uh, Greta wrote a great book on this. But like small toolkits, handouts, leave behind, something to give to a parent to help them understand. These things didn't exist. Well, they do now. So first, they're all free. You can download them right off the internet. You can go to our website, openlysecular.org, and they're right there under the resources page. We have developed guidelines on how to become open, how not to become open. We've done specific guides, special guides directed towards students. Uh, we have one launching probably this week dedicated towards the African American community and how to live openly in communities of color. We've got one for opening up at the holidays since that's a time a lot of this comes to a head when you're doing Christmas or Thanksgiving together. We also have these special leave behinds. So for religious allies, if somebody doesn't understand you or what it means to be secular, We've created brochures you can print in hand to even members of the clergy. We have a specific one for clergy on how to understand and treat people with dignity in your congregation if they end up leaving, or how to help the parents of someone in this situation. So if you know anybody who's considering becoming open or who's struggling with it, all these resources are there and available right now that you can go and grab. We also have, and this is a tip to our friends at Camp Quest, a section on famous free thinkers. Part of this is just to help people understand you are not alone. You are one of many, and you're from a long line of these people going all the way back through time. So we partnered with Camp Quest, and they've allowed us to, hi Amanda, <laughs> they've allowed us to list the famous free thinkers up on our website. You can go there to find those as well. And then these get featured at camp, and the kids at camp get to learn about all these awesome people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, and Joss Whedon, and Angelina Jolie, and all these fun folks who are secular. We've also created a video campaign. Now there's been video campaigns before, and ours is similar to those in many ways. What we've done is, created a campaign modeled after It Gets Better, where people can create their own videos, put them on YouTube and send them to us, and we link to them and put them into our channel. So anyone out there, all of you can go home, or right now on your cell phone, create a video talking about how you are an atheist and openly secular, and post it. So people who are thinking about this, or people who feel alone, and believe me, in places like an hour outside of Memphis, a lot of people probably feel alone. 
They may not even know this group exists. They may not know this convention's here. Those people need to know there's lots of us out there, and they're not just famous people, regular, everyday people of all stripes, all colors, all shapes and sizes are secular. We've also produced our own videos. We have over 100 videos produced so far that are up on the website, and we have some celebrities, believe it or not, which is kind of cool. We got Barney Frank, Bill Maher, we have Penn and Teller who created a video for us, we have Chris Clue, who's a former NFL player, and we have four more that have agreed to it and should be coming out soon over the next few weeks, uh, including some, maybe a couple surprises perhaps. So uh, that'll be pretty cool when we launch those and we're planning on doing a lot of press around that, which would be great, you know, surprise the world a little bit. <laughs> Openly Secular Day. So this also is a concept straight out of the LGBT movement. There is an out day every year in October where people can set it as a target. If they're not sure, I, I'm hesitant, I don't want to come out, I'm afraid. You may have very good reasons to be afraid. It helps to have a date, a specific target in mind where you know you're not gonna be alone. So this is a date where we're encouraging people, if you are not open about your belief system, on April 23rd of this year, become open. You don't have to tell everybody, but tell one person. Tell a couple people, whatever you feel comfortable with. And there may be relationships that it's not safe. It might not be safe at work. It might not be smart at work. You may be a student living at home still. It might not be safe to tell your parents until you're financially independent. But you can tell some people. And we're encouraging people on that date to be open about their beliefs. So it's going to be an annual event. The first one is this year. It's April 23rd, 2015. It'll be the fourth Thursday in April every year, which we picked because Simple logistics. It's a great time to table at universities. It's at that point where the weather is nice and kids can get out on the quad and have an openly secular day event and just talk to other folks out there. So it's a week after Ask an Atheist Day every year. And for the first time really, there's been some events like this in the past. There was uh, A Day that they did a few years back on Facebook that kind of died away but it was never a coordinated thing endorsed by a variety of groups. Now we have over 20 groups in the movement, almost all the national groups backing a single day where we can all be open about our beliefs online. And you can become open for the first time. And if you're already open, great time to talk about it and help the people who are becoming open show that they're not alone on that day. Great day to wear your t-shirts. It's a great day to update your posts on Facebook. It's a great day to change your avatar picture to the Openly Secular logo, or the American Atheist logo, or whatever you choose. Right now, you can go online to our website and take the pledge. We are, have over 500 people pledged already to tell one person on that day. And what's really cool is when the people are doing it, there's a section where you can talk about it. We have hundreds of testimonials we've gotten just from this tell one person thing, of people talking about what it's been like for them, or how they're planning on becoming open, or what their experience was. And some of them are really powerful, amazing stories. So I encourage you to go there, take the pledge, and encourage others to do so. Encourage your friends to be open on that day, and be open yourselves on that day. So in close, half the country thinks you're evil. Sorry. <laughs> but real prejudice is reduced when the perception of our numbers is increased. So just by the act of us being open actually reduces the discrimination against us. Even if they don't meet one of us, just seeing that we're being more open and active decreases the discrimination. And of course, if they actually know you, and they know you're a decent person, assuming you are, <laughs> but if they meet you and see you're a good person, or maybe they've known you for a long time, it helps put that human face on. It helps dispel those myths. They're like, wait a minute. I thought atheists were evil and she didn't steal my lunch today or she didn't kill me or whatever the case might be. It breaks down those conceptions. They didn't eat my baby, how about that? <laughs> Except with barbecue sauce, Memphis style, Memphis style. So do your part, we're doing our part. I encourage you to become open, talk to your friends, talk to who you feel safe about and thank you, thank you for your time. Did I help us catch up on time a little bit? Oh, sorry. Did I help us catch up on time a little you bit? Did, yeah. I tried to talk fast, but not like the Micro Machine Man from the '80s. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, that. You remember? Yeah, he he uh, Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, I used to know his name if I had a drink in me in a trivia event. I'd probably know it. I saw a question back here. We're going to do these very quickly. 
interrogative statements ending in a question, oh. beginning with who, what, when, where, why, how, or do you think, perhaps, I guess. Uh, uh, looking for that microphone. I'm going to go dead center. Uh, Raise your hands higher up so they okay. can see. Well, I see a person in black up here. He's going to get his question. I couldn't see. Yeah. Try to make this quick. You mentioned Penn Jillette. He uh, wrote an op-ed about an atheist president a few weeks ago. He said, about uh, what? Penn Jillette. And he wrote an op-ed a few weeks ago. He said, some of my fellow atheists bemoan that the atheism is the final taboo in politics. Polls report that America would never elect an atheist president. Because of that, they brag that their favorite candidate Oh, usually Obama or Clinton has to lie and say that they believe in a God, promise that they pray for supernatural guidance in world affairs. Okay, you're, you're doing flow debate. Get to the they, question. They, they justify that their heroes are liars because Americans are too stupid and too bigoted to be told the truth. When you celebrate okay. your liar Questions hero done. as a liar, Questions you lost the moral high ground. You like, cannot to read to, to us. Dude, please, we're trying to get up on time. Thank you for your question. Yeah. This gentleman in the orange in the back, thank you. Straight back there. We can talk about it later. Yeah. Orange bat, this guy here will, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm hey, getting thanks messages. For, thanks for uh, giving me your time. Um, given the brain drain in the South, it's pretty homogenous, so all other things being equal, if somebody decides to move for a job, how would you convince them to go to a more, uh, you know, a less open place um, and to express their secularism? I, I wouldn't try to persuade them to go to the less open place, it would be totally their choice. Although frankly, even throughout the South, most of the cities are pretty progressive. It's, uh, it's really more the rural areas where it's, it's much more of a challenge. I mean, you're certainly gonna face discrimination in the South in a city, but I mean, I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it's mostly pretty fine, at least within the city. It gets a little sketchy, like half hour north, but, uh, <laughs> but most of the jobs are gonna be in city areas. So I think most people would be, you know, certainly safe, you might get you know, a few oddballs here and there. Um, but, I mean, it just depends on the city and people's experience, for sure. Uh, you know, but to be, how to be open, is start with finding your local groups online. Join, it, join the community. I mean, the communities are everywhere, and they oftentimes are particularly strong in their areas where there's discrimination, such as the South or the Midwest, all throughout the Bible Belt. A lot of the chapters that have gotten huge relative to the size of their cities are these towns in the South. So get involved in your community and, and tell the people you feel like you can trust. And you know, of course, you can go online and read the guidelines where you can get a much more detailed uh, understanding of it or read Greta's book too. Excellent. Okay, last two questions, this woman here and then this gentleman there that I'm pointing to. Hi, I was just wondering with those left behinds, if you have tried to um, get some businesses. A, li a little louder, please, I'm sorry. Um, the left behinds that you we're showing. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you've tried to get that into any businesses. I work in a motel chain, and you know, every time I have to open that drawer and see that Bible, I think, well, <laughs> I'd like to insert something else in there. So I was wondering if you tried to, to, you know, push, try to get some businesses to incorporate some of that material. We have not, and it's mostly just a budget thing. That's part of the reason we aren't printing them at this point. We're really focusing our efforts on a variety of, of other areas at this point. But it's actually a really creative idea. I always thought it would be great to have a book on comparative religions in the book, because that would be really hard for them to object to. If it would hit everybody, including the atheists and the Christians, I thought, always thought that would be cool, but that's a project for another day. Uh, you, you mentioned that none of the uh, religious organizations have uh, been willing to participate, which I found surprising. Not even Unitarian groups would want to uh, participate in something like this. Um, are we talking only national organizations, or you know? And also, what what kind of methods are you using to try to uh, reach out to these groups? So. We would accept even, even a smaller one. We started at the national level and now have tried to talk to some individual churches, but it, it, it's certainly a challenge. We've done personal outreach. We've done networking through people we know. We've done cold calling. We have a person uh, at the SSA who's contacted tons of these groups through co connections we've had or just looking up their contact information and going to them. We're about to reinvigorate it after Openly Secular Day because we've got a lot of stuff coming out over the next few weeks. And we're to try. Uh, we do have the Humanists as a movement partner, but they're really more a in movement partner. But specifically, UU as a whole has not accepted yet. I know UCC has not yet. Although I do have a lead there that may end up working out. I've talked to some people there that are would be are very happy with the concept. It's just a matter of convincing everybody else. All right. All right. Well, Thanks, folks. Thank you so much, Todd. Sure. Yeah.
Thank you.